This is the prototype demo. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to our PVCC homepage and go to My PVCC. And we're going to open our canvas. And then we will go to our Typography 1 class. And we'll open up our third week. And we'll go to our prototype demo. Once we're in our prototype demo, what I'd like for us to do is I'd like for us to right click or control click on our prototype demo and we're going to save link as to our desktop. And we're going to do the same thing with this image right here. Um, we can download the image by right clicking on it and saving image as and we're going to save it to the desktop. All right, once we're done with that, we can minimize this window. After that, I'd like for us to go to our toolbar and open up Illustrator. And if you don't have it in your toolbar, you can go to your applications and open it. But remember when we open, we want to hit our command option, control shift, and hold those buttons down while we're opening it so that we reset our settings. And keep holding it down, it might take a second. Next thing I'd like to do is go to File, and we're going to open our prototype demo that we found in our desktop. And we go Open. And we can see this grid that I have on this. Now, you don't have to use the grid, but I'm going to recommend you use the grid because that is a good way for us to align our type. And it's what we should have used on for your prototype drawings. If you hit command quotation, it should take the grid off. If you hit command quotation again, it should turn the grid on. I'd like for us to inspect the R first. Let's zoom in. Now you can use your magnifying glass in your toolbar over here, or we can hit command or control plus, and we can zoom in. Now if you don't know how to navigate, all you have to do is hold your space bar and scroll down, click and drag down. Now, if you're not good at that, you can always use your sliding bars on the side from left to right or top to bottom. So let's zoom in a little bit more and we are going to try to duplicate this R. So the first thing I'm going to do is click with my direct selection tool right here on the R and you can see that there's a linear edge on my R. Now, if I get my selection tool, which is A, or the white arrow tool, we hit A on our keyboard, we'll get our white arrow tool. And if I click on these points, you can see that they are anchor points. These anchor points allow us to bend and alter the shape of the letter form. Is everybody kind of seeing that? If we've used our pen tool before, and we've used our selection tools before, you should understand what these paths are and what these anchor bars are. If not, I'm going to have you guys review the pen tool demos that are posted on Canvas. So let's start generating our own version of this. So first of all, I would like for us to go to our toolbar on the, on the left side, and I'd like for us to grab our ellipse. And make sure we are not in essentials up here, that we are in typography. We still have our Pathfinder. And just make sure that we have our stroke. If you don't have your stroke tool here, just make sure that um, under window, that stroke is turned on, which we can see it's in my toolbar already. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our circle tool, and I already had you guys grab that, or our ellipse tool. And we're gonna hold our shift key and we're gonna drag out. And you can see that it's filling the circle. I don't want to fill the circle. I want it to be a linear drawing. So if you can see right here down at the bottom on the left side that we have the fill in the stroke, I want us to flip it so that we are on the stroke. Once we are in the stroke, I'd like for us to change the point size to be about eight points. Now let's uh, look at that. I think it's a little big. So maybe I'll make it a little smaller. Now, if you make it smaller, hold down your shift key. 
and that should be pretty good. Next, I'd like for us to draw our stroke or our tail here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my pen tool, which is right here. You can also just hit P on your keyboard. Now, if you're using a pen tool, I always tell my students to hit AP so that you're always grabbing your selection tool, your white arrow tool, with your pen tool. So I always hit AP before I grab my tool. And that way, when I hit any of my anchor points and I hit my option key, I, off, I automatically get my white arrow key. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to click and drag down. And that's my stroke. I'd like for us to grab our direct selection tool up at the top. You can also hit V on your, your keyboard. And I'd like for us to analyze the size of the stroke. Now, the width of the stroke seems a little small to me. Maybe it's 8.25. That looks better. And maybe I'll make that 8.25. I want the strokes to be even throughout. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our pen tool. We can hit AP if you don't want to do that. And I'm going to go from about right here. And I'm going to drag my pen tool down to the corner and I'm going to click my path. So this is what we're looking at here. Now, if you want to deselect your pen tool, you can hit Command Shift A, like I told you to. You can go up and deselect up here, or you can just hit your black arrow key. Three ways you can deselect. So once I have all of my paths here, I'm going to want to change it so that it looks more like my original over here. Um, the first thing I, I would do is I'd probably try to line up your stroke with the back side of that letter form, or the circle. And maybe we will move it up a little higher. So that's looking a little better. I still think the stroke is a little skinny. Maybe it was nine points. Let's try nine points. That looks better. What I want to do now is I want to click from the corner and drag out a marquee so I select all of my paths or my lines. And what we're going to do next is we're going to go to object and we're going to go to path right here and we're going to say outline stroke. Notice that my strokes are all shapes now. Instead of them being lines, now they are actual shapes. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to join these with the pathfinder. So with them still selected, I want us to go over to the pathfinder tool on our right side in the toolbar and I want to unite these shapes. And so that should be your, your letter form. Now, there are a few things that are still not right. Look at the bottom of this, this edge, this terminal edge. I want us to grab our white arrow tool. What we can do is we can click on individual anchor points and drag them down. And it's snapping to point right now. I want to make sure that I am going to zoom in and make sure that I'm snapping. There we go. So that's our R. Now there's a couple things I want you to look at or inspect in the R that kind of are quirky. If we look at the back here, we can see that there's an inconsistency in the edge. If we were to fix that, I would take my pen tool, and you can take away points to make it look a little more accurate. And maybe I would adjust that little top anchor point by hitting my command key or my alt key and adjusting it as so. So there we go. My R looks a lot better now. Now I'd like for us to work on our T, and what I'd like for us to make sure is that on our view, that we have snap to point, but I also want to have snap to grid. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this T. So I notice that the T starts on the edge of a grid, and I'm going to just follow it 
point by point. So I'm going to start on this bottom left corner. I'm going to click it up. And since it's on snap to grid, if I click on my next point and I click and drag out, I should get a perfect fillet. Now again, notice that I am on fill over here. I'd like to switch that to line. We're going to go straight up and we're going to continue our letter form. Right here. I'm going to click and drag out so I get that perfect fillet. And I'm going to come over to right about here. I'm going to click and drag out. And notice I get a bend or an arc in my tool right there because I clicked and dragged out. If I want it to go back to a straight point, all I have to do is click back on the point, go over, and I'm back into this grid format. So I'm going to keep going. I notice that I'm two past on the second grid. And I click on that point, click down, click once more. And when I click over to that fillet area, I click and drag out. And I'm going to get this next fillet area, and I'm going to click and drag out. And we are almost done with this. Click and drag out. And that is our letter form. Now, if you want to fill this letter form, all we have to do is go back to fill. And that is our T. Now, if you want to deselect, hit Command Shift A, or we can also deselect up on select. It says deselect up here. Let's try working on this R. Now, if we inspect this R, it's just a simple drawing of an R. There's nothing special, it's all linear. But I'm going to try to mimic this and maybe embellish on it a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my pen tool and I'm just going to start on a path. I'm going to click and drag up and I'm going to use my snap to point. Now, if you don't want to use snap to point and you want to turn that off, that is completely fine. Like if you're trying to do something more calligraphic, notice it's still snapping to grid. Now, let's say I don't want it to snap to grid. You can always go back up here and turn off Snap to Grid. I'm going to make this path kind of go right to there. I'm going to deselect, hit Command Shift A, and then I'm going to make this quirky final path here. I'm going to make this embellished tail. I'm going to click and drag out, click and drag out, and I'm going to click and drag out a little bit. Now, one thing we can do is we can smooth this out a little bit. I have too many paths here, so I can delete that one, and I can grab my anchor point by grabbing either my white arrow tool, or on my pen tool, I can just hit my command key. So if I hit my pen tool, if I hit my command key, I can drag out and fix these paths. It looks a little better. Still a little funky in that R. Let's just drag this anchor point up. The less anchor points we have, the more smooth your letter form will be. So I'm going to drag that out a little bit. And that looks good. I'm going to deselect. Now I'm going to try to work with my stroke a little bit. And this is what I want to show you. Now. If I use my black arrow tool and I select this R, and I go to my stroke over here. Now, if you don't have this stroke, remember you have to go to Window and grab your stroke, which is down here. Once I grab my stroke, I want us to mess with the edges. Do you want it to have a flat terminal edge? Do you want it to have a round edge like I've made it? Do we want the corners to be sharp? And I kind of want my edges to be sharp on this new version. And then I'm going to change my point size on my, on my stroke. Excuse me. Select that again. Change my point size to eight points. And I can make a bolder letter form. Now, again, if we want to turn these strokes, 
from the pen tool into a, a shape, we just go to object, go path, and we go to outline stroke. And that should be one path. And then we can go to our Pathfinder tool and we can unite these shapes so that they become one path. All right. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to trace a letter form. So I'm gonna do, since we've already done a B, I'm gonna do a, the D over here. Let's zoom in. And we're just gonna use our pen tool. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to click and to get straight lines, you just hold your shift key down and I'm gonna hold my shift key down to get all of these shapes. Now, it's important for us to remember when we're working on a letter form, again, that we want it to be on line. Notice it keeps switching back uh, because I keep switching it back uh, to fill instead of line. And then we're gonna click and drag out, click and drag out, go to the bottom here, and then I'm going to hold my shift key, and then I have my final anchor point. Now, I'd like for us to work on this little interior area. And if I hold my shift key down, I can get these straight paths. And I'm going to try to mimic what I see here. I'm going to click and drag out. And I'm, since I don't want my path to go up in this, this format that the anchor bar is, I'm going to hit back on the anchor bar and I'm going to hold my shift key and get a straight line. Now this is interesting. If you forgot how to make a compound path, we're going to make a compound path. So I noticed that my layer in the background is being selected. If I zoom out, I want to lock that layer and we can lock that layer by hitting command two. Now, if you're bad with command key functions, which I know some of you are, you can always go to the layer and physically lock it. So let's say I select on that background. Notice that it is on that layer. You can see that it's selected here. And then I can just lock it right here. So now when I select these with a marquee tool, you see that it's not selecting that background. The next step we're going to do is we're going to create a compound path. If I were to fill this letter as is, this is what it would look like but we want to cut a hole out of the center. So the way that we do that is we select both the image that we drew first and the hole that we want to cut out. Then we go to Object, and we go to Compound Path and Make. This is a very important command key function that I think everybody should remember is Command 8. And now when we hit our tool over here to change to Fill, you'll see that our letter form is filled with a hole in it. So if I overlap this other form here, you can see it has a little hole right there. So that is how we trace our letter form. So I'm going to turn our graph off for a moment by hitting command quotation. And I'm going to add a new and I'm going to add a new artboard. If I go to my artboards, I'm going to add an artboard and I'm going to place my document of type. I'm going to recommend students to take photographs of their typeface prototype on the graph paper and pull it into Illustrator so that they can trace their letter forms. So the first step I'd like for us to do is go to File, and we're going to hit Place, or Command-Shift-P, and we're going to place our prototype there. Now your prototype doesn't need to be filled. I click and drag out to drop it where I want it. Now you can clean these up in Photoshop before you start working on them. And I'm going to again lock that layer and I'm going to zoom in and we're going to trace these letter forms. I'm going to use my pen tool and I'm going to click and drag out, click and drag out. Now, the less anchor points we use, the better this will be. Again, I am on my shape tool. We want to make sure that we are on our line tool. Now, if I'm 
if I'm going to pivot my point, I can always hit my Option key and switch direction. Or we can just click that point and then start going in a different direction. Click and drag out and click and drag out. I'm going to break my point here. Click and drag out, click and drag out, and we would finish off that shape. And to deselect, we hit Command-Shift-A, or we can hit our arrow key. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our pen tool and trace this last stroke on this A. And I'm going to go to right here. I'm going to use my option key to flip directions, but if you aren't comfortable doing that, you can just click back on the point and we can click and drag out, click and drag out. And I'm going to pull my anchor back in a little bit so that I can come and make this cleaner edge. Now I noticed that on this anchor point right here, that it's looking a little rough. And once we're done, we're going to select all of this and we are going to fill it in. And that is how my letter form should look. Once I'm done with that, I can pull off the graph by turning off my eyeball up here on my layers. And this is what our letter form it looks like. Now, if I click on my anchor points, you can see that some of them don't look so great right here. And we can always go back, click on our anchor points and start smoothing these out and pulling them in so that they look better. And I can see that this one right here is kind of creating a funky shape right there. And this one is too. Now you can, again, you can always turn off your smart guides and that will give you a little bit more flexibility in what we can do. I think I don't need this anchor point right there. The fewer anchor points, the better. All right, that's it. Good luck tracing your letter forms for your typeface prototype. Take care.